Mary Whitehouse Appreciation Society. Picture this in a studio somewhere far, far away. seen by now, George Bush has done an advert for American tourism. Hang on a minute. The President of the United States is doing TV commercials. Hi. When I'm wrestling with a multi-billion pound budget deficit or the problem of future nuclear proliferation, I don't have a lot of time. I just want to wash <laughs> <laughs> okay, if George Bush can do it... Hello! There's never been a better time to visit Britain. With its many historic buildings, London is a world city that is second to none. Excuse me, mate, you've got any spare change? And don't be part of all the homeless people. I know change, there mate. seems to be... I know there seems to be quite a lot of them. Bollocks, your house has been possessed. <laughs> hey, what are you waiting for? An invitation from someone who's not going to be out on his ass in about four weeks' time? <laughs> Come on. Hello, Norma. Hello, I'm Boris Yeltsin. There's never been a better time to visit Russia. In Moscow, we have some of the finest architecture in the world. In St. Petersburg, we have a magnificent collection of post-impressionist art. And in Novosibirsk, we have a scotch egg. Only just passed its sell-by date. Hello. There's never been a better time to visit Iraq. We have many thousands of historic buildings, most of them in many thousands of pieces. Oh, 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 come on down. See the many large pictures of me. The Iraqi people will give you the friendliest welcome you'll get anywhere, particularly if you are an invading army. Why not visit Iraq? Oh, and P.S., if you could bring some weapons-grade plutonium with you, that would be nice. <laughs> I'm growing my hair at the moment, so I'm trying to look like the lead singer out of Ride. The hair is almost there. All I need to do now is smash my face in with a hammer. <laughs> now, you may hum and work to Mark off of Ride or Tim off the Charlatans, but with this music, though absolutely beautiful, it doesn't make me feel any less alone. I mean, with both Mark and Tim, you wouldn't want to, like, hang out with them, though, would you? All right, Mark, just give us a shout if the brake lights are coming on, Mark, all right? Just, just shout out if the brake lights are coming on at all there, Mark. Mark! Mark! <laughs> Mark! <laughs> OK, Tim, you're in goal, and me and Mark will be playing a flat back four, trying to spring the offside trap. If they get through, Tim, remember, come off your line and narrow the angle, OK, Tim? Come off your line and narrow the angle. OK, here we go, all right. <laughs> OK, Mark. Right, to you, Mark. Oh, man on, man on, to me, space, to me. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, come out, Tim, Tim. Come off your line and lower the angle, Tim, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tim! yeah, it's like I'm only able to relate to the interstellar coldness and alienation Robert Smith thinks about through the experience of having watched him. You remember The Cure had that spate of putting out poppy singles because Robert Smith wanted to show his happier side. Yeah, that lasted a long time. That was when they were number one every week. I mean, you may love him, but Robert Smith cannot carry a happy tune.
but still a thousand times better than that. And so many bands now that just want us to clap and buy. You know, Blur, Julian Cope, Happy Mondays. Do we believe Sean Ryder was a rent boy? I don't think so, because, I mean, he couldn't have made much money. Uh, I'll have the one that looks like Peter Beard's live. There's about, I don't know, six million of us watching tonight. I want one of us. I don't care who, just one. To go up to the lead singer of OMD and just say this. You can't dance. <laughs> and that's it, just walk away. Sailing on the silver. You look like a geography teacher at a sixth form disco. <laughs> Uh, now, I'm sure you all know the true story of why rugby is called rugby. Uh, it's because it was invented at rugby school in uh, 1823 by a bloke called William Webb Ellis. Now, uh, what happened was that uh, <laughs> during a game of ordinary football, this bloke at one point picked up the ball and ran with it and put it in the opponent's goal. <laughs> Now, you think about this, you think, well, hang on a minute, it's really, really obvious why rugby school decided that they'd make all the other schools play their new version of this game, right? Because they were obviously crap at football. I mean, for heaven's sake, someone picks up the ball, puts it in the opponent's goal. This makes Maradona look like the spirit of fair play, right? There were 21 other players on the pitch. What were they doing? Referee, handball! Surely! But no, they're all going, I say, William, what a fabulous idea. It's an entirely new sport. Let's play that instead. There's no other sport where you could get away with behaving like that. The World Snooker Final, the Crucible Sheffield. Hendry lines up his final shot. Hang on, I've got a better idea. I can just put the ball in the pocket. <laughs> yeah, I win, and we'll call it rugby snooker. <laughs> Also, the thing I don't understand is that William Webb Ellis picked up a soccer ball, and soccer balls are round, but a rugby ball is oval. <laughs> and that's because that was the shape of William Webb Ellis's head after his teammates had dealt with him. <laughs> oh, business, right? <laughs> the other thing is, right, what about... <laughs> What about the PE teacher? Where was he, right? If William Webb Ellis had gone to my school, he would have been sat in after class, writing out a hundred times, I must not invent new major world team games during lessons. <laughs> and also, I have to say that it's really lucky that William Webb Ellis went to a school... <laughs> ...with a nice, sensible name like Rugby. Mitchell down through, outside to Gosco, Hodgkinson's in the line, Heslop over in the corner, this is a world-class game of Sudbury College of Further Education. <laughs> of course, the, uh, the Rugby World Cup was sponsored by Sony, and they were good sponsors because they weren't too intrusive. It's always bad when a sponsor tries to intrude too much uh, into the sport. There are certain deals that you dread ever being struck, like, for example, the snooker being sponsored by Dulux. You join us at the Crucible, where Dennis Taylor waits for the referee to replace the white with a hint of apricot. <laughs> Taylor has two choices here, red to top pocket, come back for the black. Red to middle pocket, come back for the dusky banana with a hint of avocado. Well, later on at about 12.30, Debbie Greenmarsh will be dropping in for a coffee. But first, as always on Wednesdays, it's time to see what's going on in our gardens with, as ever, Colin Ditchmore. Thank you, Ivan. Well, as you can see from the view outside our window here, brrr, it's a bit nippy out. So, if you are trying to grow winter vegetables, such as runner beans, you might find that the odd patch of ground frost is going to make things a bit tricky. Is it? Oh, shit! Oh, no, it's going to be a bit tricky. Oh, no! Damn, it's all spoiled! Piss off! It's going to be a bit tricky! Uh, what, you can, what you can do is put down some salt. This helps to melt the frost, although it can leave the pods a little flaky. Oh, flaky, no! <laughs> One thing that will really help, though, is if you put down a bit of fertiliser early on... Yeah? ...and spread it all over the base evenly... Yeah? Then, like 